Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Will Repko, and I'm going to have a little chat tonight as part of our high school outreach efforts and as part of our SDI outreach efforts. We have a series of people that I would describe as MSU debate adjacent, and we wanted to kind of reach out to a, a group of people who were willing to come on the call and were willing to share with us uh, their thoughts on what the online debate transition has been like and what uh, the criminal justice reform topic might look like going forward as we prepare for the tail end of the season. So I'm going to turn this over to each of the individual participants. I'll kind of call them out as they appear on my screen and ask them to just give their name and kind of um, tell us what neck of the woods that they are from. Uh, I'll start with Zach. Zach, why don't you start us off? Um, I'm Zach. Uh, and I'm a senior at Cypress Bay High School in South Florida. And on my screen, I'll transition now over to Gabe. I'm Gabe. I'm also a senior at Minneapolis South in Minneapolis. All right. And then I'll move to Utah and go to Madeline. I am Madeline, also a senior, and I go to SLC West in Salt Lake City, Utah. And then the screen that is empty is my um, backup device in case this entire thing melts down. Then I'll go to the poorly lit gentleman from Louisiana. Um, my name is Austin Kynell. I'm a senior at Caddo Magnet in Shreveport, Louisiana. Pronounced Kynell. Uh, now we'll go to Canada's finest. I turn it over to Professor Hagwood. My name is Benjamin Hagwood. Um, I currently serve as the director of debate at Beale Academy and as the director of NSDA Vancouver. And last but not least, I turn it over to Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm a senior at SLC West in Salt Lake City, Utah. <laughs> okay, and we may have a few more people join us in a little bit. So I'm gonna kind of open up a little bit and give the floor to whomever wants it. It'll be a little bit free flowing. And I'm gonna start with asking people about their expectations for online debate, how it has kind of progressed in their eyes, and then sort of any tips that they might have. And it doesn't need to only be about online debate. If your life is filled with online education and there's a few things that you wanna throw in from that realm, um, feel free to kind of offer any, any tips, survival tips, debate tips, anything that you think that this audience uh, might be able to glean a few pro tips about. Uh, the floor is, is, is anyone's. Room full of debaters and no one wants to talk. I'll, I'll go first. Um, one of the most useful things from a coaching perspective that I found is online debate gives us the opportunity to actually be able to observe uh, multiple students across different debates. You can pop in and out of rooms, especially if tournaments allow for you to do that. Um, from, from an education standpoint, I think online classes are more difficult. Uh, connecting with students, maintaining retention and things of that nature complicates our ability to kind of build the bonds that we normally build that really influence and get students to stay in the activity. Um, but um, I actually have had, we've had an increase in students um, this year at the academy I work at, um, although we're completely online and most of the schools in Canada are actually still in person. So that's, uh, that was, uh, it was very interesting because I was worried about us losing a lot of students. Um, but I would definitely say the being able to watch debates from students. The only part that sucks is maybe if Classroom Cloud or an SDA campus could figure out how to let coaches come in as anonymous people instead of announcing that we are there in the room watching. A lot of students get really nervous when they're like, oh my gosh, my coach is watching me. I don't want to make a mistake. And that causes them to make mistakes. So that could be something in the future that they could do if there's a way to just add observer as a tag on our name instead of, um, I, for instance, at Harvard, when I entered a room to watch, one of, some of my um, students compete, it literally said, um, you know, Benjamin Hagwood advisor, <laughs> which my students noticed immediately because that's different from everything else on the screen that it says. So uh, that would be my one suggestion of things to improve on uh, Classroom Cloud or debating online. I'm gonna leave that question open to, to all the students, but I'll kind of add a twist to it, which is that for all the students on this call, several of you have gone deep at tournaments this year, and it's gotta be a completely different experience than maybe what you had anticipated. 
because you know in an in-person tournament that audience is maybe a banquet hall or a, a classroom and you're talking about dozens of people i imagine that a few of you have been involved in debates where the audience is just filled with people that that you almost seemingly have no connection with on the other hand several of the high school tournaments are doing what Ben suggests, and they're sort of limiting the amount of raw observers. So any hot takes from the students uh, in navigating sort of the notion of this online virtual audience? I think I think a lot of people would be interested to hear your take on that. Um, I have, uh, sorry if I interrupted someone. Um, I have a take on Zoom just in general. And I think that I've had this conversation with some of the debaters here and Mr. Repco, but I think one of the most important things going into like online Zoom debate and also just like school and anything you do online is just the mindset that you have. Because I know that a lot of the debaters just in the community were really disappointed about not being able to like see your friends or like make those connections that Mr. Repco was talking about at in-person tournaments. Um, so I think having the mindset of like, oh, we should be very grateful that we're able to do this activity online as opposed to like, you know, like football or other sports and being able to still like continue with the activity that we really like online is important. And I think that it makes like the actual doing it online a little bit more enjoyable because we still get to like have connections with people, although they are a lot farther apart than they would normally be. I'll say that my experience has been like drastically increased by being able to like be in person with my partner at tournaments. Like, you know, a lot of people can't do that, but I mean, if you can, I would definitely recommend it because it makes debating easier. Like you don't have to, you know, mute on like Discord or whatever. You don't have to like, you know, kind of have the disconnect between uh, like, like between each other uh, when you're talking on internet connection. You can just like, you know, hand each other computers, talk to each other. And it's also just like, you know, a support person. You can talk in between debates, like you're there together. And it just makes it a lot easier for me. So can I ask the flip side of that is at a typical in-person debate tournament, if you wanted it, you could get away from your partner for a second. Uh, you know, one person could could go and, and grab lunch or you could kind of roam the hallways. And I've noticed through the years that the debaters at Michigan State sometimes do want to hang out in between debates they want to talk with each other if it was a particularly exciting win or disappointing loss. But sometimes uh, over the course of 10, 12 hours, they like a moment where they can decompress. So Austin or anyone, uh, how has that dynamic shifted as, as we've moved to the virtual environment? Um, oh, Gabe, you can answer. Yeah, I actually, one thing I do like about the virtual environment for partner communication is that while it's harder to like to for example like when you're debating an affirmative and you have extra time in the one and see and you need to give them cards that makes it a lot harder and like other things like that what is easier is that you can like have a little time between rounds to like do some r and r so when you're at an in big in-person tournament and you're debating and it's like between round four or five or something or you're prepping for a big round like you're in like a cafeteria that's smelly you're eating old pizza and it just like increases the stress in some ways when you're at home it decreases the stress because you can be in your own lane rather than getting pairings at the exact same time as everyone else so that has been like an added benefit for me you have almost you have more maybe autonomy at least which makes it easier Would everyone on the call feel differently about online debate if it wasn't in the middle of a pandemic and stacked on top of online school? Now, I'm not sure how many of you have online um, versus in-person learning. Obviously, Ben has said that, um, you know, he's been able to kind of work a mix there and that, you know, but I'm curious, where does everyone kind of feel uh, in terms of what the community's reaction is to online debate in light of kind of the broader circumstance in which the community inherited it. If there was, um, oh, no. Oh, sorry. No. You can go. You can go. Okay, thank you. Um, I guess one thing I wanted to mention is that I feel like it is pretty easy to get burnt out looking at a screen and being on Zooms all day, especially when you have an entire week of school and then you're going into a full weekend of a tournament. 
So kind of going along with what Gabe said, it's important to take the time that you have between rounds or the breaks that the tournament gives you as a time to genuinely just like relax and spend some time away from your screen. And um, that is, I feel like one benefit of online debate that a lot of tournaments have done a, done a good job at is um, kind of giving the debaters a little bit more time in between rounds. And it is a little bit less frantic and stressed when your round ends and you're like, oh, I have an entire two hours before I get my next pairing. So it kind of gives you the opportunity to just relax and recharge. And I feel like debaters should take that opportunity in order to just kind of diminish their stress and just focus on getting ready for their next debate. And before we welcome the next director of the MSU debate team, let me uh, allow Zach an opportunity to answer the same question. Go ahead. I was just going to say exactly what uh, Madeline said. Burnout is very real. Uh, I think most people in here have experienced it. Um, and although I, I do think like some schedules allow a little too much time in between debates uh, and others very little time, uh, I, I do think for the most part tournaments have done a pretty good job at least you know allowing kids to have their breaks and relaxation time etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so we only have um professor hagwood for a little bit longer i'll let uh ben take the lead on this question but i'm curious about everyone's answer so take a moment everyone and sort of step out of your own experiences with online education online debate and think about maybe the novice on your team uh, or the person that's relatively new to the activity that has never known anything but online debate. And uh, I'm curious about whether or not they like it, whether or not they're feeling the Zoom overkill and any conversations that you have had or would have with that set of students as they consider the possibility of in-person debating and how that might be drastically different. So um, I, I think students that had just started this year with it, um, since they don't know any different, it's not too much of a daunting task for them to just kind of jump on and do it. Not to mention that several students that I work with, um, they go to school, they have classes anyway from about 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. on several days of the week. So uh, they're kind of used to just being in class all day anyway, kind of just grinding away online. And the tournament at least gives them an opportunity to do something they uh, enjoy doing. I, I would say the biggest difference is the older students that talk to them about being able to go to tournaments, being able to actually go to Harvard or being able to actually go to Stanford, which is a really big deal for students that are not in the United States. And for some students that are in the United States, um, because you may not get to go those places normally, right? And you do get to see a lot of your friends, but um, I don't think it's been a major difference for the students here, but that's also uh, because a lot of them may not have gone to the tournaments anyway, um, if they were in person, just because it's so far away and uh, the cost barrier for getting there is substantially different than if you're in the States. Also, hi, Carly, congratulations. <laughs> Any student reactions to kind of this new universe of novices within your own program or or anything that kind of touches on this question of the adjustment that we've all undertaken uh, this season? Um, one thought I had is that I think it's kind of nice that like novices or any level of debater on a team can debate online because it gives a lot more opportunities as to what tournaments you can actually go for uh, go to. Um, I mean, Mr. Hagwood touched on this with like less cost, but just like being able to go to any tournament, like Madeline and I were able to go to like, I don't know, like Emory MBA, and we would have never been able to go to those just because like we can't travel that far. And so I'm sure novices, like it's probably like interesting for them. And I hope they don't get that like taken away from them in the future to be able to like go to so many tournaments that you probably wouldn't be able to in terms of like travel restrictions or like school policies. So that's something that I've really appreciated, just like having more opportunities in that sense. It's like a silver lining of the online debate world, so. Yeah, I have to actually super, I agree with Hannah like extremely strongly on her point about MBA and other tournaments. We were doing something, we, we would have gone to like 66% of the tournaments we've gone to this year if it was in person. And 
it has been helpful in getting better at debate to be able to go to more online tournaments. It has also just like really been hard not to see your friends. It's hard to debate for a judge that you can't see. Um, like there's none of the facials or the vibes of a room or anything. Um, and it's really, you know, it's deteriorated a lot of the community aspects of the debate, but kind of finding a balance, like how do we, there are some benefits like decreasing costs, which have been important. And I don't know, that has been one silver lining for sure. What about beginners in your own school? Do they, do you think that they have more of an opportunity to, to just see older students as an observer um, or to see many of you are the most experienced debaters within your own program. To what degree has this sort of created opportunities to, for them to learn from older peers? Has it even changed the amount that you can interact as an older peer on your own team um, with younger students that, that you might uh, take on a mentoring role? And, or is all that kind of just a wash because of Zoom fatigue or all the, all the work that you all need to put into preparing for your own competitions? I think it's um, actually helped. Oh. oh, sorry, you go first this time. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, it, it's actually helped our novices a lot. Um, for like Ari, like the first part of the question, you know, we like do talk about like, we'll talk about the pier at the Cal tournament or like going to the bean in the city at Glenbrooks, which like, they don't really know any of that. So it's like a tournament's just a tournament to them. So I feel like that'll actually like boost their I don't know what's the word for it. it it'll make them look forward to in-person tournaments even more but for the second part of the question i actually i think it's given they've been able to go to tournaments you know as everyone else said before that we've never gotten the chance to go to and that's also meant that they get to go to tournaments on their own so like we've had the capacity to like send novices to like their own tournament for example like the ut tournament and like we had me and like one of our other varsity members, like were able to coach them one on one, which like never really got to happen because any money we did spend on coaches would go to the varsity kids. So I don't know. I think that's one pretty cool bonus of online tournaments. Um, go ahead, Madeline. Yeah, I... And then I'm curious about also Madeline first, and then Ben. I'd like to hear. Uh, just some of the differences that you've noticed as it relates to instruction and travel schedule along these lines for beginners. But go ahead, Mel. Um, I definitely agree with everything that Zach had to say. And one thing I wanted to add on to that is that I feel like there's a lot of opportunities that novices can take advantage of because you can watch pretty much any tournament that you want to, which is a really good learning opportunity to look at um, some of the varsity members on your own team or like pretty much whatever team you're interested in watching. So I know that I've been watching a lot of college rounds this year, which has kind of helped me understand a little bit more about how college debate works. And I feel like novices can definitely do that as well. Like um, Hannah and I were at the Berkeley tournament this past weekend, and some of our novices were debating at a Utah local, but it went into Monday. And so they had the time to watch us in some of the later elimination rounds. And of course, that's just something that you wouldn't have been able to do if it were in-person debate. So that's a definitely a great learning opportunity that anyone can take advantage of. Ben. Um, so the, the biggest difference here um, with working with novices is that the, the academy I actually work at, we do not have a lot of kind of open debaters. It's mostly, you know, middle school and early like, you know, ninth grade students debating, um, which is shocking for me because my preference is definitely, um, I, I gotta get ready to go. That's my knock to let me know I have to go. My preference is definitely um, I'm kind of uh, open, really doing really critical and specific cases. But uh, the, the biggest instructional difference is, uh, I think for them is just getting used to the tournament format. Um, the, the, it's really difficult for them to understand why they have to sit around for two hours and wait for the next round to start when um, for, for most time for us, we're going to tournaments on the East Coast. So tournaments start extremely early for us. And um, they, they don't get, um, excuse me, we're, we're on the West Coast, tournaments are on the East Coast. Tournaments start really early for us. And uh, they don't like sitting around waiting. Like I know several of you said, it's great to be able to decompress and have some time off. No, they want to just do it 
and be able to get through the day. So having the extra hour and a half, two hours has been the biggest difficulty that we found with online debate. But I actually have to go. Thank you so much for letting me on the call. Uh, my class is starting and I'm, I'm getting my knocks now. Again, congratulations to Director uh, Carly Watson and I uh, hope to see you all later. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good to see you. Mm -hmm. Ben Hagwood, a seven week old and a 20 month old. The hair will get grayer. Just watch the next time he's on one of our calls. I guarantee it. Okay, so let's uh, transition a little bit. Uh, well, Carly, I'll leave the floor um, to you if you wanna add anything. We're kind of opening and editing this as well. So no big deal. But if there's kind of any pro tips that you wanna add before we transition into CJR uh, as it relates to just online debate, pro tips, differences that you've noticed as the season has progressed, et cetera. It's a little bit of a non-answer to the question, but I do think a lot of the things that we like about online debate are things that hopefully we remember that we learned when we go back to hopefully in-person tournaments. So being able to coach someone over Zoom or being able to live stream a debate for people to watch, all of those things I feel like are within the horizon of the tech aspects that we have, we know that it's possible. And so I hope that some of this stuff that reduces barriers to access survives even if we do go back to in-person tournaments. 